to order. And the first item on the business is going to be clarification of consent calendar items. Oh, you want to call road first? All right. The record will Let's show that with road. the exception of Mayor Tim Rosansky and Council Member Nichols, all council members are present. I should listen to you every now and then. Huh? Okay. Now we can get to clarification of consent calendar items. Uh, Mr. Uh, Curry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On item number four, can I get a sense as to the time frame for the Adelphia changeover, <laughs> if we have one? <laughs> Mr. Kiff? <laughs> uh, Council Member Curry, the, the Cox, our agreement with Cox Communications will likely happen faster than our agreement with Adelphia Communications because Adelphia, of course, is still in bankruptcy and all their assets haven't been transferred over to Time Warner. So short answer is Cox, I think, will come back in two months. Adelphia, maybe four to six months. Okay, and those are both going to come through this committee, coming to the council? Or That's right. Okay, very good. They come to this committee, that the proposed committee under item four, and then to council for final approval. Okay. And then if I could, Mr. Mayor, when I, don't go away, Dave. Uh, under item eight, do we have a, this is for uh, water quality runoff, or water uh, runoff services. Do we have a sense as to the source of this runoff? Yeah, in the Newport Coast, it comes from a couple of different things. It, it's surface runner, surface water runoff from ir excessive irrigation, mm -hmm. and then, in addition, uh, there's most of the studies are showing that additional contribution is made from uh, direct irrigation sources that soak into the uh, land itself and then seep out as it as it reaches the lower part of the gully. So it's both seepage and uh, sheet flow, but it's basically all ex excess irrigation water. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Selich. I have none. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nichols, do you have any items on the consent calendar that you would like to have clarified? Tell you what, we'll come back to you. Uh, Ms. Dago? No, none. Uh, Mr. Ridgway? No, thank you. Hey, Dick, do you have anything? Yeah, I had, uh, well, it's, it, Kip is doing that right now, maybe eight, nine. I would like to have a little uh, more explanation on that. The, the comment that, that uh, he answered on, on eight as you were walking in was, the question was, where does the runoff come from? And it was from surplus irrigation water that runs off through the surface and down to the bottom and over irrigation that seeps into the groundwater table and then ultimately seeps into the channel. So that was the question, the answer. Did you have another question besides that? Have you, uh, you were doing forensic evidence almost that <coughs> established which associations or groups or locations this was coming from? Maybe I could chime in here, Dave. Um, I've had some experience with this particular. We're really concentrating on a small area called Pelican Point, and this is actually a really good opportunity for us because it is such an isolated area. Um, it drains into the areas of special bio biological significance, which is Crystal <laughs> Cove waters, the, ref the marine, marine refuge. So um, we, ha we have an opportunity here where we, ha we can actually separate out the, the difference in the flows and test the difference of flows from the coast highway, which is the city's, the golf course area, which is the, the Irvine Company, and Pelican Point, which is a homeowner association. So there's a real good opportunity here to do some testing and really learn a little more about water quality and, and what's really happening to find out what constituents we have there. We have done some preliminary testing and we have found various uh, elements that are present and we're going to try to track down where they came from. It's not quite as detailed as the part that Steve is noting at Pelican Point, but we are doing similar testing in Buck Gully. It's, it's not all done. We do have some preliminary data back and we presented that to the Water Quality Committee 
and we may want to bring that to council in a, a preliminary form or, or wait till it's wrapped mm -hmm. up. It's good information. You'd be interested in hearing. Okay, we, we should put that on the study session list then of something to bring before you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Sounds like that might be something you might want to sit down with the public works director and go through those items with him. Uh, as a, uh, these are contracts that are being awarded or completed, and and I'm sure that uh, he could answer those questions for you. Okay, I have a, a clarification on item 19. Uh, the on the the last page for the Coastal Bay Water Quality Committee, uh, item three should be Council Member Keith Curry will replace Council Member Rosansky as a member instead of instead of Selich. Okay. I, I have one other question. I'm sorry. Okay. And that is on um, 18. Um, I think that's pretty important and that we ought to, I, I do not understand, well, I understand what Costa Mesa is taking out of their general plan, which is the same things we were asking for on Measure M. And, and I'd like to understand, uh, this should have gone to, e, to the EQAC, I would think, but it never went to EQAC. And I'd, I'd like to get 18 explained a little bit. Okay, what this is, is this is, uh, we were commenting on their plan. I don't think they've completed an environmental document yet, so it wouldn't have gone to EQAC yet. We wanted to make sure that if they considered something in the future that it would be, uh, take into consideration those elements that we talk about related to circulation. Ms. Wood. Thank you. Actually, they have completed um, a draft mitigated negative declaration, I believe right, it is, on. and that, that's uh, what we are commenting on in time for their city council hearing. Had the city of Costa Mesa done an environmental impact report, that probably would have gone to EQAC, but the negative declarations do not. And a clarification on the project, the, the project is amending their general plan and zoning to reduce the amount of industrial development and allow um, additional residential development. I do not believe that the project includes changes to the circulation system, but what they have done in their environmental analysis and their traffic study is to assume that um, those improvements are, are not going to happen. Do I have that right, Steve? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think <laughs> one of the things we wanted to point out to them is that the current, you know, quite often what happens is we were told, well, the current zoning allows for so many trips. And we're really seeing a situation where the, the existing development is really relatively static. So I guess the idea is that uh, while they're saying that it's really not a change, it is a change from really what we see existing out there today, and we wanted just to highlight that. Is that? Oh, but in but a the nutshell? project does not include a change to the no, circulation doesn't. element or the right. mixture plan of arterial highways. Right. It's just the assumptions in their traffic study. Right, and right. and we wanted them to include the intersections on the three streets that we mentioned in their analysis. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Uh, it also involved either an assumption of a 19th Street bridge or no 19th Street bridge. It assumed the assumption that there would be nothing done to Coast Highway at its outlet or that there would be work done, as we've talked about in Measure M, at its outlet, which would be a tunneling and uh, rather 
extensive. So I mean, it uh, it will have a considerable uh, implications for Newport Beach, will it not? And that's why we're asking um, for them to study that further. Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying to get out. I think our citizens should understand that that's part of this too. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Let's. Uh, we have a Measure M presentation by OCTA. <coughs> uh, would you like to mention something to start with, Mr. Curry? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I would like to uh, thank OCTA for their responsiveness and for the, I think, excellent uh, outreach uh, program that has been put on by OCTA to talk to local governments and to concerned communities as they fashion the renewed Measure M program. I think. Uh, the finished product is going to reflect uh, very uh, well the uh, emerging and evolving needs of communities such as ours, the uh, needs of mobility within our county, and it's going to provide our city in particular uh, some increased flexibility to address mobility needs that we haven't had before. I'm very excited by what I see coming out of uh, Measure M, and I'm uh, looking forward to the presentation today uh, as uh, Art and Monty uh, respond to some of the issues that we raised in the letter two weeks ago. And I think uh, as people look at the new Measure M, you're going to see that it, uh, it really does provide uh, additional resources and additional opportunities for us to uh, address traffic and mobility in Newport Beach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Council members, uh, my name is Art Leahy. I'm the, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the uh, Orange County Transportation Authority. Uh, forgive me, but I have to just brag for 30 seconds about the, uh, the organization. Uh, we. Uh, purchased State Road 91 toll lanes three years ago. It's been open for 10 years. We did that to bust the non-compete restrictions on improvements on, the, on that freeway, which ran until 2030. They also extended from the LA Orange County line all the way to the I-15. Uh, since we took over ownership, uh, the year just ended, uh, 2005, we had the highest traffic volumes in history on the toll lanes. We had the highest uh, average vehicle occupancy and we had the highest revenue. And the neatest thing about buying it and getting rid of the non-compete is we now take the profits and we invest the profits in improving the free lanes, uh, even in Riverside County. In addition to that, we're nearing the end, by the end of this year, the completion of uh, the widening of the State Road 22 project, Garden Grove Freeway. It's 12 and a half miles long. It's 50 lane miles, four additional lanes, uh, 35 bridges uh, widened. Uh, the interchange uh, at the 522 widened. Uh, that's going to open up in May. Uh, this is a uh, design build widening, the first design build widening of a freeway, an operating freeway in the history of the state of California. The nice thing about design build is it liberates the private contractor to do design sequencing work to get the work done quicker. It's an 800 day contract, 50 lane miles in 800 days. Uh, we are uh, on schedule to be completed by November 30th. I'm proud of that project. One last comment. Last year we were named by the American Public Transportation Association as the finest big city transportation organization in North America. That really reflects well on, on the, the toll roads, the freeway construction, the Metrolink service, uh, the bus system, and other things that OCTA does. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Measure M. It's the half penny sales tax. Uh, which was approved in uh, 1990. Um, it is what we use to match uh, federal and state funds. Uh, it is a 20-year tax which ends uh, on April 1st of 2011. Uh, at the time it was passed, it received a 55 percent approval rating by the, the voters. Now, however, uh, a renewal requires a two-thirds vote of the public. Um, we view Measure M as a contract with the taxpayers, a contract with the voters. In effect, Measure M says if you give us a half penny sales tax for a 20 year period, you're going to get this set of projects. Up on the top, you can see a long list of important projects, the I-5, very noteworthy. Uh, other projects which have been completed, um, big improvements. Can you imagine uh, if the I-5 was still a, a six lane freeway? Uh, the 405 widening, same thing, very important. Uh, we now run Metrolink service uh, into Los Angeles and into, into uh, uh, Riverside County. Uh, we've stabilized fares for senior citizens in the disabled community. Um, we continue to, in the middle of the, of the, the uh, slide, regional road projects and local turnback to provide money to cities for improving 
their streets and for maintaining their streets. In most cities, Measure M provides about one half of the money required <coughs> to maintain their city streets. By the way, we just know parenthetically, uh, we know when we're in Orange County because the streets are in good shape. We know we're in, when we're in Los Angeles because the streets are con characterized by potholes and disrepair. In L.A., they have a full penny sales tax, which runs forever. In Orange County, we have a half penny sales tax. So the fact that our transportation system is in better shape, I think, reflects well on the management of the Measure M program. Down at the bottom, you see some projects continuing underway. State Road 22, I just mentioned. Uh, the I-5 far north widening uh, will be awarded uh, in about the next 35 days. We'll be in construction this year. Uh, I'm proud of that project because L.A. County is now looking to widen the I-5 all the way up to the 605 because of what Orange County is doing. The rail transit program referenced there is the replacement for Center Line. Uh, we are now looking at not a Center Line project, but rather enhancing the current Metrolink system that runs today. The track exists, the right of way exists, the stations exist. We'll be looking at running all day service uh, up into Los Angeles and into Riverside and within Orange County. Uh, we look forward to the day when, um, when that happens, and we're going to come back to that in a moment in terms of the new Measure M proposal. Uh, Measure M has been very important to Newport Beach. As you can see, a total of $27 million has come to Newport Beach over the 15-year uh, period so far. It's been used to pay for improvements on MacArthur and Newport, and I won't read all the street names to you. You know about it. You remember what those streets used to be like. It's hard to imagine how... Uh, how Orange County would work today if we hadn't improved all these streets, including the ones listed up there. Without Measure M, um, we'd have uh, obviously a much different transportation system. The El Toro Y would not have been improved. Um, I won't read this again. Uh, Measure M has been the mechanism by which we have maintained a great transportation system in Orange County. Um, you know, um, all roads lead to Rome. We all know that. Uh, after 3,000 years, they're still working on them. Uh, that's true in Orange County as well, especially when you look at the future. Uh, population is growing. Jobs are growing. We're having uh, experiencing now very high densities. Uh, we're one of the most dense populated counties uh, in California. Traffic will continue to, create, to increase as people travel more, as they travel longer distances. If we don't maintain the transportation system and expand it, you know what the outcome will be. In the vernacular, Orange County is a self-help county. What that means is that we have a set that we tax ourselves to pay for our transportation system. You can see the map of California up there. The red counties are those which are self-help counties. They're the biggest urbanized counties in California. The gold counties uh, do not have a tax um, and therefore uh, have not been able to improve their transportation system using local funds. In the middle of the map to, the, to the, the left there is Southern California. You can see that L.A.'s tax goes on forever. San Bernardino and, and Riverside go on until 2039, and San Diego until 2048. We expire in 2011. What that means is our ability to maintain our transportation system will come to uh, a, a very sharp negative impact very soon. That will put us at a competitive disadvantage as regards our neighborhood counties. Um, a person could ask, well, why, why renew Measure M now? It doesn't expire until 2011. Uh, I, I think the principal reason is that we've completed with the 22 and the 5, uh, we've completed the major Measure M projects. Um, we, are, we have done major investment studies on the 405, on the 91. We're just starting a major investment study on the South County uh, uh, corridors, including the I-5. But we don't have the money to build those projects. We're doing the major investment studies to get the projects teed up, but we don't have the money to start work. Uh, renewing Measure M now creates a revenue stream that we can bond against to, to get those projects. I would also note that uh, you know Orange County is a tough place to sell a tax, uh, even if it is a renewed tax, uh, and it may be that we will fail. Um, and if in that case, we'd have we'll have some time to go back to the voters and inquire again. We'll have some chance to learn what we may have done wrong this time if, in fact, we do not succeed. Um, in order to get the tax renewed, there are some very stringent requirements. I think what you'll see here is some requirements which exceed that of almost any other tax that I can imagine, uh, both in terms of the, the, uh, uh, the requirements of the mechanism for getting the tax renewed, but also in terms of the content and the safeguards. 
um, to get on the ballot requires that a majority of the city councils uh, representing the majority of the population in the incorporated uh, cities uh, vote in favor of putting it on the ballot. It has to be voted in favor by the County Board of Supervisors and approved by two-thirds of the OCTA board. When those milestones are reached, it then becomes eligible to go on the ballot we, in November, where we would then require a two-thirds majority vote of the population to have the tax renewed. Um, we are proposing, we've done a great deal of work with the League of Cities and all the individual cities over the past year. We've done some uh, focus groups around Orange County and some polling work. We've done some traffic analysis and planning analysis as to what would be important for Orange County. And we've devised a, a, a draft plan, uh, which uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll describe to you now. It's a 30-year duration uh, tax. It will produce about $11.8 billion during that 30-year period. The formula allocations you see up there to freeways, streets and roads, and transit is the same as in the current tax. Uh, we have strengthened the taxpayer safeguard. You can see some dollar amounts up there that allocate the money to those categories of projects. I would just note for you one of the most important safeguards is we can't move money within pots, within categories. The uh, 11 point or the 4.8 billion that you see on freeways would have to stay in that category unless the voters move, vote to change it. Uh, the draft plan for freeways includes major investment in State Road 91. Uh, that's a very important project, billion dollars uh, uh, on the I-5. There's a total of around $800 million on the 405 uh, and money allocated to other major uh, interchanges and, and freeways as well. Um, for streets and roads, uh, it more than doubles the funds uh, for, uh, for local streets. Um, point three up there is an important one. Uh, this is a new, a new uh, uh, component of the plan. Uh, the idea here is that we would make money available to cities on a voluntary basis to join with us in a JPA of some kind or an MOU uh, to improve the signal systems. Uh, Measure M would pay for the new signal systems and the software. We might have groups of cities join together with Caltrans to create areas where we'd, where we'd look to coordinate the, uh, the signals uh, and therefore to improve uh, speeds on our local streets. Uh, we found a great deal of acceptance uh, from all the cities around Orange County. I don't think anybody's opposed to this right now because they've all come to realize that as you drive around Orange County, you're passing through any number of cities, and a person trying to travel really doesn't care what city they're in. What they want to do is get to their destination. So this is a, a new element that we think is exciting. Um, in terms of uh, the amount of money which would come to Newport Beach uh, in the event M were renewed, you can see there... Uh, our estimate for the current plan is uh, nearly $65 uh, million. That's more than triple uh, what the city has received under the current plan. Uh, that is money that the city would be able to use to maintain the street system in, in Newport Beach. Very important for the people who live here and travel through here. Um, uh, over the past year, I mentioned we've, we've worked with a lot of cities to, uh, to get their input, a lot of groups, businesses, uh, citizens group to get input. Uh, there's a number of projects listed up there as examples of eligible projects. I would also note we got some inquiries about Newport Coast Drive. That would certainly be an eligible project as well. Water quality, I'll mention to you in a moment a little more detail. Uh, we, we find that voters understand the linkage between water quality and roads. They understand that you drive on a, on a road, your car drops oil, gasoline, rubber, particulates, heavy metals and the like. It runs into the ocean um, and then it comes back to you on your plate of tuna um, or when you swim in the ocean. Voters understand that's a problem. This is California, Southern California. We want clean and beautiful beaches so we get that connection. The local transit component is something which could be very interesting for, for Newport Beach. The idea here is to make money available to cities to run circulation systems within their cities focusing on their commercial districts or, or whatever it is that might be important to them. The underlying notion here is that there's no reason why OCTA should win every bus uh, in Orange County. Um, it may well be that cities on a voluntary basis could devise a superior local circulation system. We'd help them if they wanted us to, but we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be requ would not require that. Uh, let, let's let the cities offer some services that may, uh, that may be very useful to people. We're also offering uh, to maintain uh, 
the lower fares for, for the senior and disabled community. Uh, in terms of the transit plan, uh, the, I, the, the, the proposal is to invest money in the Metrolink system, um, uh, running 18-hour-a-day frequency service seven days a week. The idea there is that about two-thirds of the jobs and, and population of Orange County are within a four-mile radius of Metrolink stations. So there's a good backbone system there. We would upgrade the service, the stations, the parking, and the safety. Bullet two up there references Metrolink extensions. The idea there is that cities might come together, form partnerships with other cities, and devise services that get people from uh, communities up to Metrolink stations and then back home at the end of the day. Uh, we've, we don't have technology defined. We would look forward to cities coming forward with proposals, uh, ideas on how we might do that. Um, the regional gateways for high-speed rail uh, is a, um, a station in uh, perhaps in Anaheim, perhaps in some other city that would be the terminal for high-speed rail service, uh, perhaps maglev rail service to uh, Ontario Airport as an example. Uh, as demand for air travel increases in Orange County, having those kinds of connections become more and more important. Community bus services I mentioned a little while ago, I won't repeat that. Uh, the idea would be that cities would come up with proposals uh, and, uh, and would compete for those funds. Um, the, the water uh, cleanup that I just mentioned uh, is, we think, a very attractive component. We have allocated $240 million for, for water cleanup. The idea here is not to uh, allocate the money on a formula basis, but rather to ask cities perhaps working with water districts or the sanitation districts to come forward with recommendations, with proposals which we would then competitively evaluate. Uh, the idea is to find the most important, most impactful projects and then get those funded. OCTA is not interested uh, in, in doing water projects. We would look forward to funding others who have the knowledge and the expertise, uh, but we'd be looking forward to the highest high impact projects. In terms of safeguards, I think there's probably more safeguards on this on this proposal than in any tax in California. Um, we we already have an annual audit, an independent annual audit, that finds whether the, whether the expenditures are in accordance with the with the, the law. Uh, bullet two is a new idea, which would be that every 10 years there would be a review of the plan. Uh, if there was a decision at that time uh, to change something, which is entirely possible, something will be different in 10 years than it is today. Uh, that change in the plan would then have to go to the voters. Uh, we would continue our annual report to the taxpayers. We would have penalties for misspent funds. If a city misspent funds, uh, we would uh, get the money back with interest, and that city would become disqualified from measuring funds for a period of time. Funds, all funds kept in a separate trust. Administration limited to 1 percent, by the way. Uh, that's, that is the maximum which OCTA can spend in administering these funds. What this does is ensure that the monies get spent on actual transportation projects. The Taxpayers Oversight Committee exists today. That's a group of citizens who are not selected by the OCTA but rather by the grand jury. They come in, they review all of our plans, they review the Measure M expenditures, and on a regular basis they have to find that we either are or are not in compliance with the Measure M ordinance. A very important uh, safeguard because it's an fully independent overview of what we are doing. Next steps. Um, the, uh, the Board of Directors of the OCTA uh, approved the draft plan I've just mentioned to you uh, on January 9th. Uh, we've been uh, doing public discussions and workshops, meetings like this with city councils and with other groups, uh, and that, that's continuing on for a little while longer. Um, actually, in, on April 24th, our current schedule is to ask the Board to approve a draft final plan. That would reflect a great deal of input from the League of Cities, from employers, from the Automobile Club, uh, from the uh, Business Council and other organizations around Orange County. Um, following that, we would then go to cities and ask cities whether they believe that it should be placed upon the ballot. Um, during the May and June time period, uh, city councils would have a chance to have those discussions and make their decisions. We would hope uh, that, that most cities, if not all, would in fact approve the plan, uh, at least for consideration by the voters. Uh, if that occurs in July, uh, we'll go to the county board. Uh, if they concur, we'll go to the OCTA board. Uh, and if they have two-thirds of them vote in favor of it, it would then be placed on the ballot uh, in November 7th. 
uh, of this year. Uh, that's that's kind of where we are with the plan. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Uh, I would just note for you, we've tried to, to structure a plan which allocates money in a way which is uh, acceptable, which is exciting to Orange County uh, travelers. We've tried to do it in a way which gives cities opportunities for creative proposals um, to improve their transportation system. So I hope we've succeeded. Again, we'd be pleased to have your input. Uh, if you do have thoughts for the Board of Directors, uh, we would ask that you transmit them as soon as possible. I know you've already sent one letter, but the Board will be considering this in just, a, just a, about a month or so from now. Thank With you that, very much. I'll, I'll conclude my presentation. Uh, one question that I have is you mentioned that every 10 years, uh, if needed, you would have a vote. Would that be required to have a two-thirds vote, or would that just be a majority vote? Um, actually, I don't think we've defined that yet. I th it would not be a tax. Uh, it's not a change in the tax, so I suppose one could argue it would be a majority of vote. If you have a thought about that, you should communicate that to us as well. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Uh, Mr. Curry. Uh, Art, thank you for that presentation. If I could focus you, please, on the $240 million that's available for water quality. As you know, Newport Beach is sort of at the end of the line in terms of, of water runoff, and whether vehicular waste gets into the, to the stream off the 405 or the 5 or the 91, it gets into Newport Bay, gets into the Santa Ana River, and ultimately ends up either in the bay or on our beaches. I want to be sure so that the people at home understand this, that that's precisely the kind of runoff mitigation that we're talking about uh, funding and mitigating uh, with the Measure M funds. That's exactly what we have in mind. Uh, remembering here, we want the highest impact projects. So uh, that would suggest that wherever the highest concentrations of, of pollution is, that's where we'd want to have the project occur. Uh, we would have an independent pa of a panel that would evaluate it, but we have exactly mm -hmm. those sorts of projects in mind. And then thinking about the local circulator service, as you know, I have suggested that we could take small buses that would take uh, young people in the summertime and on weekends from the port streets or from the uh, hill communities from Newport Coast uh, to the beaches for participation in junior lifeguards or other programs so as to reduce traffic and parking uh, congestion on the peninsula. Uh, and the same buses could ultimately be used to take people to dinner along Coast Highway in Corona del Mar in the evenings. Uh, for example, and they could run at very specific peak times mm -hmm. so that they're not running empty but are running when people really need to use transportation and sort of redefine what transit means in the context of Newport Beach. Is that the type of project that would be eligible under the renewed Measure M? Yeah, Council Member, absolutely. We would look forward to neighborhood circulators. We would want them to interface with the OCTA buses and where appropriate with Metrolink and whatever else is running. But that's exactly what we have in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I would direct your attention to, for example, Pasadena, mm -hmm. which has circulators of that type, which go to the business district, which go to the schools, which go to the civic center, uh, and the like. The, the whole idea is to get people, uh, senior citizens often ride these buses, sometimes young people, but sometimes just normal people, right, average age folks go out and for social or business purposes and take their circulator bus. And then one other question. I know that uh, although we didn't talk about it today, one of the uh, uh, transit services that's very important in Newport Beach is a senior, elderly, and disabled uh, transportation. I understand that there's additional funding in the measure for that as well. Can you speak to that as well, please, Art? That's correct. There, the, we're, first of all, we're required by federal law to provide services to senior citizens in the disabled community. Uh, we do that. This is, this is a growing uh, area of, of demand. We have more and more people who require these services just for basic life requirements. Uh, so we've, we've put some money into this to try to make sure that we're able to respond to those needs. Uh, it's a very important service that, uh, with a growing portion of the population. It's an aging population. This is a 30-year tax, so when it's finished, I'll be a senior citizen. Um, and, um, you know, we You already are. are. <laughs> Thank you, pretty Mr. close. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, he went to my uh, 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 competing high school, and I know how old Art is. <laughs> All I can say is go Franklin. Yeah. Right. Mr. Um, the $65 million you projected coming to Newport Beach, is that from 2012 to 2030, that Correct. period? Yes, sir. Is that pretty much on a linear basis? You, those, are 19, uh, those are 19, uh, 2006 dollars. No, but I mean, is you, would you divide it equally by each year to get an idea of how much money coming in, or is it going to have peaks and valleys in it, or what? We used projections based on, we, used proje we took projections from, from uh, Fullerton, Chapman, and UCLA. We averaged them. They were projected out over, over 
in some cases a 20, in some cases a 30-year period. So we tried to <coughs> anticipate uh, growth in economic activity. I don't know those exact numbers, but I suspect they show some some increase over time due to economic uh, activity increasing. We can I can certainly get that for you. Okay. My uh, another question I have is the. Um, I presume that 65 million is a certain percentage of a pool of money that's left over after you take out the uh, regional needs such as freeways and transit and things of that nature. Do, do you have any idea either in the past or in the future um, that out of that money that's left over, what percentage of that money comes to Newport Beach as compared to the amount of sales tax revenue we generate into the Measure M funds? Um. I don't know the answer offhand. It wouldn't be the same because there are certain projects like freeways, the I-5 and the 405, which may not be in. Well, I'm, I'm excluding those. I'm just talking about the stuff that's not regional use. Well, I know, but part of Measure M is paid, paying for those big mega projects. So a, a city will not get money for street maintenance or improvements, which is equal to their Measure M contribution because of other projects like freeways, which may not be in the city limits, but which may be of, of great a benefit to the residents. No, I understand that. That's, that's why I'm saying if you took all of the regional projects out and just culled down what's left uh, from the local share. Let me ask Monty, Monty Ward uh, and I work together on this. Let me ask him to take a shot at this. I, I think the question you're asking is of the regional road funds, how does Newport Beach fare? And compared and to what we generate in revenue. Compared to what yes. you generate in revenue. Um, very difficult calculation to make. I think the easiest way to look at it might be to look at what, how does Newport Beach do compared to the cities as a whole, percentage-wise. And we, we can provide you with that uh, analysis. I don't have it right here. I will say that the, and I talked to, to some of the members before the meeting started, in, in the current Measure M, uh, the cities that have been most uh, uh, competitive for the regional funds have been those cities uh, in the larger cities in the central part of the county because they had roads with the highest volumes and the highest uh, uh, number of, of, of uh, congestion problems. Uh, we, we consider those to be low-hanging fruit that has really been picked. As we go forward into the future, the cities like Newport Beach who have significant uh, regional uh, issues, uh, and for example, Newport Coast Drive um, is an increasingly important part of the system. I think uh, as we look at the, the solutions to the problems presented by the congestion at the end of the 55, it's another issue that will the city will, will want to have, have pay attention to. Those kinds of projects will be increasingly competitive for those funds. So I think the areas like Newport Beach and parts of the South County that have uh, these kinds of, of transportation issues will be increasingly competitive for those funds going forward. But we will provide you with an analysis of, the, uh, of how you fared relative to the other cities. Yeah, because it's a competitive that. program, it's really been geared towards the highest volume, highest congestion projects. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, and my last question is, uh, it gets back to the water quality issues. Um, are these water quality projects, I, I guess I'm inferring from the questions that Councilman uh, Curry asked, that the water quality projects have to have a direct relationship to a road and a point source of pollution coming off of a road as opposed to just a generalized water quality project? Well, I think we'd be looking at cities and others, other districts, to make proposals uh, which would be evaluated. The purpose of it is to clean up water, so we would presume cities Groups would put together projects which have the highest impact. Uh, so a project that would not have uh, a road uh, as a point source of the pollution could conceivably be eligible. Under Possibly, this? but I mean, we know that we know what happens with the water. That when it, when it rains all over Orange County, the water runs on the roads and it all ends up down the ocean. Um, it's kind of hard to separate it right, sometimes. Right. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, a third of the a third of the county comes down San Diego Creek, so that uh, okay. we're looking at uh, water quality in the Upper Newport Bay is is our major concern, and I think this is one of the things that uh, Mr. Curry is wanting to to make sure that uh, we have the ability to capture <laughs> some of that amounts of money for some of the Upper Bay uh, improvements. Yes. One one of the things I think that I I just would want to add is. In the, just for an example, in the freeway component of the plan, 
there's about $170 million for our water quality mitigation just for each project that's done. The money we're talking about in the water uh, quality component of Measure M is in addition to that. It is to address the fact that we're behind the curve in taking care of the problems caused by runoff from, from our system and that we need to have a greater effort there. It's also an opportunity to leverage using the, the, the competitive program, $240 million, to leverage improvements uh, through the freeway mitigation program. For example, rather than in every case saying, well, the solution is to put filters on every storm drain, uh, perhaps the solution is to build a, uh, a bioswale, an area where the water can, can be uh, collected and filtered in a more natural fashion with much lower operating and maintenance costs over time. A smarter investment if you have the ability to do it. And this, we believe, would give the opportunity to do that in more cases. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you. Um, quick question for you, Art. Uh, a reauthorization of Measure M is from, again, 2012 to 2030? 2011 to 31. Pardon me? For, uh, April 1st, 2011. Okay, well, that even may, so uh, to 31. So we have a 20 year run on that thing. I'm, I'm sorry, 41. It's, it's a 30 year renewal that would go into effect in 2011. Okay. Pardon me. A 30 year renewal. Yes, sir. Okay, let me just give you some figures. We're going to be a donor city in this situation. If we, you're saying in that 30 year run, we're going to get $65 million toward our projects, right? That's what you showed Correct. up on the board. I just want to make a comment. We currently get, right now, uh, we're, we have high tax revenues in this city, high sales tax revenues. We get about $21 million in sales tax revenues. That's 1%. Uh, if you add a half percent on that, let's just say it's $10 million over 30 years, um, that's $300 million, and we're only getting $65 million back. I just want to let you know that we as – I recognize there are regional systems that need to be improved, but um, – and I think, and clearly, <laughs> Newport Beach wants to be part of the solutions for mobility in, this, in the county of, of, um, of Orange. But I, I just want to remind you that we are going to be a donor city without a doubt, uh, again, because we have such high uh, sales tax in this city. That's number one. Number two, on the water quality issues, and I, these comments are well put, However, the allocation of those mitigation dollars, I hope, go to the cities who are contributing to the San Diego Creek. The San Diego Creek is what comes into uh, Newport Bay. And the other cities are clearly starved uh, right now. They're not meeting the NPDES permit. Um, you know, the Lake Forest, Irvines, uh, Tustins of the world need those dollars. And, Quite candidly, I just want to make a comment. I support them getting those dollars, and I certainly applaud that we're putting a water component in there because by the time it gets to the storm drain system, if they're doing it correctly, we should have no problems here. Remember, we have four TMDLs in our, in our harbor that are mandated by the federal government. And one of those, of course, is sediment, which comes from those cities, and then metals, oils, greases, that type of thing. So um, it's an interesting conundrum we find ourselves in. We want those monies, but we're going to be a third-party beneficiary because other, uh, you know, we kick people out for that. Sorry. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're lucky. You're a good guy. Um, so I'm just making observations more than anything. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, I don't know how you allocate these dollars, but the city of Newport Beach is over that same period of time, if we could just have a half cent sales tax in our own city, we'd have $300 million for our roads. Um, well, let's, let's play with that a little bit. First of all, in the sure. water, um, we would, would look forward to impaneling a group of experts on water management, water cleanup, and have them evaluate the projects. Uh, we're not interested in having OCTA staff try to evaluate a water project. So we would look forward to people 
arraign their arguments, their analyticals, to support that Project A has the biggest bang for the dollar. Those are the projects we would look to fund. Uh, we're not looking just to spread the money out evenly uh, through 34 cities. Um, that's, not what, that's not what's con contemplated. It's a, a, a program designed to put money where the biggest impacts are, where the best results come from. If you look at the formula up here, and I'm not sure this answers your question on, on uh, Newport Beach being shorted or, or being a, a donor can, uh, city, but about a third of the money goes to streets and roads. So um, in, the, uh, in the calculation you just did, I can't remember what you said the sales tax would be from, from uh, Newport. Well, we get $21 million a year for, uh, for 1%. So if you take half that amount added on, that's $10.5 million per year that we're contributing toward this system. Okay, so Over 30 million. years. Okay, so, so $65 million would be about 20% of that. But that's only a third of the program. The other two-thirds of the program would include perhaps buses that run in, in Newport Beach, perhaps uh, freeways that Newport people drive on. Um, so th the calculation is a, a fair one, uh, but as far as it goes. However, there are other investments that would be made outside of that category that, that possibly could be a benefit to Newport Beach. Could is this fraction relative like now what you're dividing That's it up? exactly what we have now. So then the Measure M funds coming to the city, 30% uh, of them can go to local projects. Yes, sir. 32% to be exact. And actually, we've increased that in the transit component because of the, me the MetroLink extensions and the local circulators. Those, are, those components do not exist in the current, current program. But, but when you give us funds now, they're not dedicated for a project. They're 32% they're of them, roughly, or something like that, the, are, are funds to be used for local streets or projects that we think are the best? Some of the money goes to uh, competitive projects, which are improvements. Uh, and cities propose projects uh, that are evaluated by a panel of of, of traffic engineers and public works directors from around the Orange County cities. So most of the it, money is is for a project, though. Is it, or right is now, it, it's it's uh, 18 and 14 or 16. Let me, let me give you. I mean, just so the numbers that those numbers are changed a little bit. The the point is here: there's a turn back component, which is a formula, which is the bulk of that 32 percent, which goes to maintenance, and the city spends them on whatever they want. There's another component, which is for new projects, which are improvements. Mike? To be a little more precise about the numbers, under the current Measure M, a third of the money is available for streets and roads. Of that amount, currently, 60 percent of that you have access to as a city by entering into a competition against other cities. Forty percent you get as a guaranteed amount each year. And that formula of how much you get is, is based on sales tax revenue, miles of road, and your population. What we're proposing in this new Measure M is rather than 60 percent available through a competitive process, 60 percent is available by the formula. You're actually getting a bigger guarantee, excuse me, a bigger guarantee in the proposed renewed Measure M than you have today. A bigger guarantee. You're also a bit, you can also compete for the remainder of 40 percent of funds, and you can compete for transit funds, which you couldn't compete for under the current Measure M, and the Metrolink extension funds, and the water quality funds. The, av the available funding for the city, some competitive and some guaranteed, is much larger under this proposal than it is under the current Measure M. So, in in looking at the the question that uh, Council Member Ridgeway uh, raised, I think if you look at how has the city fared so far, how has your transportation system benefited from Measure M, it will benefit in many more ways and, and with a larger share of funds in, in the future if Measure M is extended. But I, I'm really just making you guys work for your uh, pay here. Council Member Daigle. Uh, couldn't one also argue that of this um, sales tax generation that's occurring that visitors and, and folks from other 
parts of Orange County and so on are the ones shopping at Fashion Island, although we love to shop there too, uh, that, that clearly uh, those contributing to the base that ultimately fund these improvements in Newport Beach are perhaps coming from outside the community as well. Council Member, of course, and I would add to that tourist dollars and to all the beach communities and the resorts in Orange County, there's a great deal of economic activity from visitors. Okay. I had a couple other questions for you. Uh, what projections um, in terms of population increases for Orange County are you factoring into your planning? Um, I think we're assuming a 24 percent growth from 2000 to uh, 2030, 24% growth in population. Which would uh, mean how many uh, oh, people? I, th we're, I think we're looking on the area of 3.6 million okay. uh, in around 2030. We're, we're just over 3 million right now. Okay. And then my final question is, um, you talked about some of the benefits under the current M, uh, Measure M for seniors and disabled. Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe kind of go through again what those benefits would be? We have a very substantial uh, senior community here in Newport Beach. Sure. Um, the, the, the current program uh, subsidizes fares for seniors and disabled on the fixed route bus system. Now, the fixed route bus system is not paid for with Measure M, except for fares for the senior and disabled community. In addition to, the, to our fixed route system, which is, by the way, almost all people going to work uh, or going to school, not surprisingly, we also run a, an access service, which is uh, available for people who have various levels of disabilities. Uh, we're required to run this, but people can call up, they can make an appointment uh, with us to uh, be taken on a certain trip. Um, those fares are subsidized and will be off during the 30-year period with some escalation, but they're still, re they're still bought down. Uh, but this, these, are, these are services which are used to get to senior citizen centers, to hospitals, to doctor's visits, shopping sometimes. Um, uh, oftentimes, these are people who really have no other option to travel other than on, on the access service. So uh, thus part of that's paid for with this as is, this is well. And what would be the best way to reach OCTA? Well, we have a website, octa.net. Um, you're welcome, and much of this is on there as well. Uh, you're also welcome to call me. I'm at 714-560-5584. I want that cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, one more, one more point I ought to mention on this, just in closing. We use this money to match federal and state funds. If, in fact, the state makes money available, there will be a local match required. Federal funds for highways or for transit systems require a match. If we lose Measure M, we don't have the ability to match federal and state funds. So there's double and triple uh, uh, exposure here as regards this, uh, this issue. Thank you very much for your time. Vice, Mr. Mayor, if I could, one other quick question. Sure. Uh, Art, as you know, most of the self-help counties who uh, extended their tax in the last election cycle are now engaged in various so-called early action strategies to get projects funded in advance of the new tax uh, or the extended tax going into place. Assuming that OCTA passes uh, this fall, will uh, OCTA take similar action so that these projects can be advanced prior to 2011? Absolutely. The, the 91 investment study that we have going on now, the 405 major investment study, for our being done for exactly that reason. We're getting project definition well along right now to move quickly. We'll have a revenue stream that we could bond against if this were to, were to happen. So we would move the projects as rapidly as we can. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I would second that. Art, as you know, I'm on TCC at SCAG. That's the Transportation Communications Committee. Um, and. SCAG is, ha, has a number of advanced planning on the books right now so we can get the dollars from the federal government. And I know you guys are part of that, an important sure. part of that, um, <coughs> because those who have plans that are uh, permit ready will be uh, far in advance of everybody else. That's so a good comment, Keith. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anybody from the public that would like to comment on this issue? Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. My name is Dolores Odding. I live in Newport Beach. Um, my brain is a little bit tired right now. So we're expecting $11.86 billion in revenue over the next 30 years, and to administer this money will be 1%. Is that correct? So how much is 1% of $12 billion? $120 million. So $120 million over 30 years. So that's going to be $4 million a year. That's all that will cost to administer this money. Are you sure it's not $120 million? 
So four million. Okay. Um, secondly, um, Councilmember Ridgeway, you bring up a very interesting point. If uh, we got 19 million over 15 years, and now we're going to get 64 million over 30 years, so we're going to get 2 million versus 1 point something million. Okay. Um, it would really behoove us to keep the half cent in the city and get 300 million. I mean, can't, can't do it, Dolores. It's okay. not authorized under the state. But okay, uh, well then you shouldn't well, like entice people is, like that. If <laughs> that would work, that would work just fine if none of us ever left the city boundaries and never used any of those public facilities. Well, it sounded so enticing, you know. Well, you get 310 million. I mean, like you put in 310 million and you only get 65 million back. So, um, and we're a donor county as it is to begin with. We get seven cents, and San Francisco gets 65 cents for per, per dollar. Well, I don't mind my dollars going to the improvement of the 55 freeway, the 5, the 405, or even the 22. I don't mind them either, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. I was just saying that it sounded so enticing that, know. You, you know, why bring it up and tease us all if, you know, we can never do it. So, and also, with OCTA, um, what might be easier uh, as far as the disabled and the elderly, we serve a lot of assisted living facilities and a lot of nursing homes. And what would be nice is if you had a standard type of application that a nursing home or an assisted living facility could fill out under their name versus a person's name, and therefore the facility could call to schedule an appointment ride for somebody, as opposed to each person within the facility having to have their own OCTA um, card and considering that could help us with some of the money out of the 300 million that we're not getting back. Thank you very much. Uh, excuse me, I have a question if I could for the speaker. Doris, hi. Hi. I wasn't clear from your comments, so are you supporting or opposing the, the uh, extension of Measure M? I'm, I'm supporting the extension of Measure okay. M. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, and I'm not running for office right now, so I am supporting it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to comment? Seeing no one, I'll close this, and uh, that completes the issue on uh, our presentation for Measure M. Are there any general public comments? <coughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Um, you're not going to like how this sounds, but it's okay. Hi, my Thanks. name's Dolores Odding. Um, I happen to think that Mayor Webb is doing an excellent job as being a mayor. And I have been watching the TV meetings at home. And I would like all of you personally to pay more attention, to not talk to each other as much. Because to be honest with you, it doesn't look good when people are watching and you guys are all fooling around. And Mr. Mayor Webb has to tell you guys to be quiet. So I hate to sound like a teacher, but that's what I used to be. And, and I think that you need to look like professionals. And I would appreciate if you would do that, because there's 70,000 people that look up to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores. It's 83,000. <laughs> Not all of them are watching TV. Okay. I, seeing no one other wishing, no, no one else, I'd like to uh, adjourn this to the uh, closed <coughs> session. Uh, City Attorney, is there anything that you need to announce about the closed session? Not right now. Thank you.